morning, everyone. Uh, let's begin this morning's class with a word of prayer. Rupas. Thank you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you this wonderful time, wonderful day. Father, we go to the key, key, key spiritual anointed. Yes, we are going to study, Father. Holy Spirit, help us. Holy Spirit, guide them. Holy Spirit, you have... You are in all things, Father. You have guide and wisdom and knowledge give to through speak you or everyone hard to mind and control, Father. You are here in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. 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 Yes. So we were discussing about anointing as one of the keys of uh, manifesting the supernatural. We'll continue with it. This is the fifth key that we have been discussing. And we spoke regarding the anointing of God upon us as well as the appoint, anointing of God within us. And then we started talking about activating the anointing. And one of the things that we noticed is that the anointing flows aligned to the grace and the gifting of God over our lives. So if we want to have a greater manifestation, then we must operate in the grace of God which is given to us. When we operate outside the grace, you know, in times of necessity, well, yes, God will bless it. Uh, but the effective way is to operate in our grace and gifting. All right. Now let's move to the next point about how to activate God's anointing upon our lives. John 6 verse 63 it says, your words, they are spirit, uh, the words of Jesus, my words, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God carries the power of God's spirit uh, and it carries life in it. Okay, uh, And the word of God is, is something that, you know, uh, enables us to walk aligned to what God wants for our lives. So because the word of God is spirit and it is life, it can conduct, if we put it that way, it can conduct the power of God. You know, when, when let's take, for example, uh, uh, cables that we use for electricity. So what, what do those, those uh, you know, metals, metallic cables do? They conduct electricity. They carry the electricity and they bring it to the place where it is needed. And then, you know, we, we have a way of drawing from uh, the electricity that is passing. In the same way, for us to conduct the power of God or the anointing, we need the word. The word becomes that, um, you know, that... that um, ingredient that will help us connect to the anointing, receive the anointing and flow in the anointing. Because inherently the word carries power and inherently the word carries, um, you know, it, it draws from the work of the spirit and it draws from the life of God. So the word of God in our lives is so important. So for, for us to experience the anointing in a greater measure, we can meditate on God's word. Now, just for examples, if I want to flow with a greater prophetic anointing, what should I do? Scripture and uh, meditate on scriptures that talk about the prophetic. You got it. So, we already discussed about the power of the word, all that is there, but also the anointing, right, will flow out of our dependence on the word. So I can meditate on the prophetic, uh, you know, all the passages that talk about the prophetic, the gift of prophecy and all. Then what happens is I am, I am, um, that is settled in my heart. And out of that comes the anointing. So imagine healing. I want to go minister for somebody's healing. What should I do? Meditate on the scriptures regarding healing. Then the flow for the healing anointing is greater. Now, 
in the same way anything that we require deliverance we want to go pray for someone cast out a demon refer to all the scriptures regarding you know the power of god and deliverance how jesus did it when we meditate on authority believers authority it flows better so the anointing will be conducted in a way through the word so the more word we have the more we are established in the word it will bring forth the release of the power of god okay so this is so important sometimes we miss it we think uh, yeah the anointing is manifesting you know in all these meetings and all we see god's anointing is manifesting in a very powerful way and we think that yeah only you know uh, stepping out each time is what is bringing the anointing but there's more to it you and i can take time in god's word meditate engage in god's word and we'll notice that the anointing is increasing as we journey with the lord so our relationship with the word is key yeah anything uh, uh, what do you actually seek for ma'am do we seek for more anointing to have more prophecy and more healing or do we seek for more prophecy and more healing which is the right thing to okay should we seek for more anointing or prophecy healing like that mm yeah um see both are important and desiring both is a good thing because paul writes about it isn't it he says earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit uh, and as far as the power of god is concerned even that's a good thing when we you know desire god's power manifesting through our lives um so i don't know which order it comes in but both are good is what i can say yeah sure yeah so the more the anointing the greater the manifestation of the gifts yes right so dependence on the word of god it accompanies the word of god and we must not miss it um yeah it because you know sometimes this mindset is there where we think uh, uh, that god has empowered like it it happened to me i used to only in, in the beginning when the manifestation of the gifts i learned about it and all we were set of friends and then some of my friends they used to flow immediately like whatever they say will be so accurate but that was not my experience so i used to think oh that's it you know god gave them more and he didn't give me more i'm stuck but then i learned that no it's it does not have to be like that just because the manifestation um elsewhere is greater yeah thank god for it and you know they've gone places they are in some other level now but in my experience meditating on the word of god so when it comes to the prophetic anointing uh, those days the weekend school started the very first weekend school on prophetic ministry i still remember it because i went for it okay and after that i think i may have attended three or four weekend schools but each time there's a greater manifestation there's a greater freedom there's greater understanding and now whenever you know uh, i have the opportunity to teach also i take time to study study thoroughly and every time i look at the notes i learn something new you got it because it's becoming the foundation of the flow of the gifts of the prophetic anointing and from the word when we are investing in the word like that we can see the change we can see the increase so that's what i i mean we need to uh, like don't feel like oh it's happening for others it's not happening for me healing anointing deliverance no problem take time in the word the word will activate it the anointing the flow of the anointing for us okay yes so that's a little bit about the word of god now the uh, next one here is consecration consecration is dedication and uh, committing oneself to the lord uh, for you know god's cleansing can someone quickly turn to second timothy chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 
but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for honor and some for dishonor hmm. okay 20 and 21 therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the later he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work okay thank you vimal um so here it tells us uh, let's focus in on verse 21 it says that, therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter so what is the latter if we um you know go back we talked about vessels of honor dishonor so things which are not of god in our lives bring dishonor so if we cleanse ourselves of those things then we become a vessel or vessel for honor so here's the key becoming a vessel of honor so what does that mean cleansing ourselves from the works of the flesh so the more we we uh, you know uh, determine to grow in the nature of christ we become that vessel of honor and when we become the vessel of honor that kind of a life is what is uh, useful for god to manifest his power because it says sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work so what is the anointing why do we have the anointing you know we keep saying i want the anointing 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 but see anointing is for us to do the good work imagine if we don't step out or we don't use it how good is the anointing if one does not use it yeah it just remains unused but anointing is for us to manifest the good work isn't it now god will fill us with more and more anointing when we are dedicated to him we are consecrated we keep ourselves away from the works of the flesh you know and uh, uh, the promptings of satan so uh, in other words a holy life when we pursue just the way we pursue the grace the gifts of god over our lives just the way we pursue the word we must pursue a holy life so uh when we are leading that holy life again because there is sanctification we become that vessel of honor uh prepared for every good work useful for the master it's a lovely prayer which we can pray lord make me a vessel of honor vessel for honor um useful for the master prepared for every good work and then we use the anointing when we are doing the good work there is the use of the anointing okay so sanctified life dedicated life consecrated life is important for the anointing to flow uh, if there are any questions you know please feel free you can always stop and ask me yeah anything no okay uh, let's move on the next point is expectation fourth point expectation will also pull on the anointing so when we have this hope that god will do then there is it's like a force on on god it's pulling from what god can give and god can release uh, so here in our notes we have the example of the woman with the flow of blood in mark chapter 5 she expected from god she said that if only i may touch his uh, garment hem of his garment then i will be healed so she went with an expectation she didn't go saying i may or may not be healed or she never said i'm going but mostly it won't work then she is lacking expectation but she went with an expectation if if at all i get the opportunity to touch the hem of his garment i will be healed so the sense of expectation among us 
will increase the manifestation of the anointing of God. Okay, and I've read people have written books about this one point where they say that you know, when uh, people don't know about God's supernatural power, God's healing power, God's delivering power, then even when one goes to minister, there's no expectation in general, right? In those places, miracles happen, but maybe a few here and there because nobody's expecting the preacher or the minister of God on the basis of their expectation can see the power of God manifest. But imagine a setting where the minister of God is fully expectant. God will do something. He's going to touch people. And at the same time, the people come with expectation. So what, are, what is happening in that environment? There's a pull on the anointing. Where everyone's expecting God, miracles will take place. I will be healed. I will, uh, you know, you will encounter me, God. You know, I will receive breakthroughs. So expectation is there in that in that uh, community or you know in, in that setting, and there are more greater manifestations of miracles. Okay, so having that expectation, how to how to get people to that level of expectation? How? We need to encourage them. Okay, that's there. Then what else? Only encouragement will bring expectation. Okay, let's say um, there's a church service and I say, let's all expect from God. Th that will bring some expectation. Okay, fine. What else will raise our expectation? Faith. Where will faith come from? Exactly. So that is how it operates. So which is why, let's take for example, Supernatural Sundays here at APC. First the word is preached. Then, in, then what happens? We get that anchor. Oh, okay. You know, Jesus is a healer. Uh, uh, God has promised that he has a covenant of healing. I believe God. He can heal my body. You know, he can heal my mind. So what happens to the people? Faith. Expectation. Then, you know, usually after the sermon we pray. Why? Because by now the word is sown. It's sown in the hearts of the people. Everyone's believing God. Come, let's pray now. Let's believe for miracles. Let's believe for healings. And we pray there is a manifestation. We got it? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, any questions? Please ask. Sister Gertrude, I'll come to you. Yeah, it's about expectation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I saw many people like they'll come with an expectation. Even that pastor even don't know that they came for something healing or something. So they'll come. Uh, even pastor don't know when they got healed. They'll exactly. go. Yes. So how it happens means uh, like uh, we can say like they won't tell to again pastor that we came for healing. We, mm -hmm. had, we came with expectation. But uh, they won't tell they'll get healed. They'll go. Mm -hmm. How it happens. See, God's power flows, no, bless you. So that's what we are saying. When, when there is faith in the heart, when there is expectation in the heart, the Holy Spirit touches them wherever they are. So the pastor may or may not know. But God works. Right, right. See, that's why we always say, even you know, when we are manifesting the gifts of the Spirit, we call out few things. Anyone here with a back pain? Anyone here with a, you know, few things we call out. But even if our problem is not called out, we can still receive a miracle. Got it? Because it depends on the people, their faith, their expectation on the Lord. So God works. That's how he works. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Sister Gertrude, did you want to ask something or... Was yes, that? sister. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. This is uh, regarding this prophetic. You know, I attended three day course in our church, New Creation. Mm -hmm. This Pastor Amos, Pastor Manoj, I think they are from Bangalore. They had come. Uh -huh. But during the course of time, like we were told to, like, you know, see something in the realm uh, mm. and uh, write down those things yes. and to discuss with uh, another 
person who's sitting next to you mm -hmm. but uh, it was not uh, like a, a spiritual but it was in the natural uh, realm like mm -hmm. what i saw and i wrote okay. and then i felt that it was not from god because uh, god did not give us a prophecy you know like but it we are trying to force ourselves to stay in the natural and uh, make it prophetic mm -hmm. so was i right uh, sister okay 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 so um see uh sister Gertrude, i don't know the details of the exercise um which were given so you know i may not be able to comment about that but it is true that god <clears throat> speaks to us through um you know visually uh, communicates visually to us okay i'll give you one small example but in the next um, semester we are going to do an entire course on the prophetic ministry so at that time in detail we'll we'll share why uh, god speaks this way or you know how how we can receive this communication okay so just one scripture for now uh, this is from amos chapter 7 and verse 7 so it's a simple scripture it says thus he showed me behold the lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand okay so i just want to bring our attention to what is said here in the beginning verse 7 thus he showed me says the prophet amos now apart from all of you know, uh, apart from this, there are many other scriptures also which I can refer to. Like if you go back to verse 4, again Amos will say, The Lord God showed me. Okay, and then he describes regarding his visions about fire. So it is true that God gives us pictures, Sister Gertrude. So, okay. yeah, that's, that's very uh, true actually. Now, uh, I know some of us may struggle to recognize if it is from god or not that will take little bit of time okay that day whether what you got was from the lord or not uh, i don't know but here's the point that i'm making god does speak through visuals okay sister thank you okay no problem and we have to learn how to uh, recognize what is from the lord and we'll talk about it in our uh, course on prophetic ministry yeah thank you for that yes uh, a person having calling on pastoral calling uh -huh. but he's feeling it's it's up to me when i went to personal prayer time god will i will give the wisdom to how to shepherd how to raise up the leaders so i confirm like i am having personal calling but also my heart desires to prophetic ministry and uh, evangelist in rural india so can i put that expectation man right? yes because see uh, when it comes to um, a pastoral calling right we'll again we'll we'll talk about all these things in depth in other courses where one can be a pastor teacher sometimes you have you have a pastor who kind of has this dual um, anointing flowing very powerfully through their lives they're a good pastor they know how to nurture their congregation, but at the same time, they have a, a, a very strong teaching anointing. You can have a, a pastor prophet, very strong prophetic anointing, right? So that is one way of looking at it. But also, as a pastor, if we don't have that calling as a prophet, we can be a very prophetic pastor. You got it? So... Uh, we are not a prophet, we are a pastor, but we are very prophetic. We've, we've learned to nurture that gift and flow in that gift to a very high extent. So it's it's a good thing what you're desiring. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Small comment to what Asapu yes. was uh, telling. It's like uh, in the fivefold ministry, people are blessed with one, two, and uh, mm -hmm. so on. And um, what I wanted to ask, ma'am, like uh, sometimes when we, when I felt the prompting of the spirit, you know, to prophesy or to tell, uh, sometimes within a day or two, I hear back from that person. 
then i glorify god that uh, what got uh, with a still small voice and that it's peace that you know it's uh, come to pass yes. but there are sometimes that you know you prophesy and then you actually wait for that uh, thing because not all prophecies will come in 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 my time and you know in my thing is that a, also a, like prophecy led by the holy spirit yes so uh-huh. we we prophesy and we just see our task is to uh, ensure that what we have released is from the lord lord okay and we present it in such a way right. that it builds faith in that person okay that's my job correct so we do it uh-huh. and we let god do Holy the rest spirit do the rest yeah. now if i have prophesied for an unbeliever uh-huh. and if for any chance they say thank you they say god bless you in return but for any chance they don't have the belief but still the prophecy will come true correct um yeah so for an unbeliever i would say um it's like this so god has put some uh, word in me to say it to an unbeliever and i have told that without any doubt mm. but their faith may not be in the lord but it will still come to pass yes it's not dependent on what they believe or don't believe right correct so uh, it can happen uh, Uh, akil because god is very gracious so there are times but these are exceptions in general god depends on their faith that's what we study so much about faith have faith jesus identified faith both both need faith okay but there are exceptional uh, times when there is no faith and god still does a miracle or the prophetic word does come true uh, so such things can happen so a good example is um uh wait let me just find it for you john 5 the man at the pool of Beth- bethsaida uh, bethesda yeah so he did not even trust god right jesus came and jesus only was uh, so interested in healing him and he's saying some other stories i'm waiting for the angel to come and move the water he did not have any faith you can clearly see that and yet god did a miracle think about uh, uh, john 11 mary martha lazarus mary martha they are talking something else jesus is going to raise lazarus now in there in the sister's mind it's like yeah lord you you will when you return you're going to raise people lazar where is lazarus faith he's dead right zero faith minus faith but jesus does a miracle so there are these exceptional cases where the people receiving the miracle may not have faith and yet god does it why because he's so good he still does it Yes, yes, that can impact them, and hopefully they will come to know the Lord. Uh, yes, is there a question online? I thought I heard someone. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Andrew. Teacher, good morning. Good morning. Ah, uh, teacher, I have a question. Like, ah, uh, uh, I don't have a, a gift of prophecy, and I am not called in a prophetic call, mm-hmm. but still I have a gift of faith. Okay. and uh, i am having the word of god and i believe the word of god and i am declaring on someone's life that i prophesy uh, blessing in your life i prophesy yes. abundance in your life yes. so will it come true because i have the gift of faith or should i have gift of prophecy or should i stand in the prophetic call for that mm-hmm. and like what what do you uh, what are you sharing to them uh, andrew like you're sharing words over their lives which are yet to come to pass Uh, teacher, I, like example, I'm praying to someone. Uh huh. I am not having the gift of prophecy, nor I have a prophetic call. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm prophesying them with the inspiration, saying that I prophesy blessing upon your life. I prophesy health upon your life. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So will it come to existence, or should I stand in the prophetic call or in the gift of prophecy? Oh, okay, I understood your question. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, there is a scripture which uh, we can look at. This is from Jeremiah chapter twenty-three and verse twenty-eight. Uh, I will read for us the NKJV version, where it says, "The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. 
and he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat says the lord so when we get a prophetic word we prophesy when we don't have a prophetic word we still have the word of god in our hearts so there are times when we can speak the word and that's what andrew is saying he's saying if it's not a prophetic word and if he just speaks god's word or god's blessing on someone will it still work so the answer andrew is yes because you are making a declaration of faith yes it's not a prophetic word but you're declaring the very word of god by faith which is also powerful so answer is yes thank you teacher thank you so yeah, much yeah sure yes thank you thank you uh, andrew good question yes any other questions regarding ma'am mm -hmm. if someone is uh, sick mm -hmm. and uh, someone came to him and for praying he is sick yes on. so uh, for he is praying for him even we can say like this if someone is going through sin mm. and some people come to him and asking for prayer so can healing will happen that time also because he is also working in um, wrong things and he is praying for others and can the anointing do work okay you are saying the person who is doing the prayer is uh... walking in sin or the person who's come for prayer is uh, god sin the minister of god has sin in their lives ah uh, yeah that's a uh, interesting so you know uh, remember i quoted that verse from uh, romans 11:29 the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable right so here's the reality of the gifts you know the gifts operate for a very long time and another thing to consider is god is very gracious when we see like first corinthians chapter 13 love is patient love is kind love is long suffering that's the god kind of love so because god is gracious and because the gifts operate right even when a person is in sin that person may be operating in the gifts we won't know nobody will know except them only their heart knows and god knows what is going on but when they come to do the ministry it's powerful nobody can identify got it but having said that it's not like the anointing will keep being strong all the time slowly we will see that it will start to come down yeah it will it has to reason is they are not in the word they are in sin they are not giving space to the spirit of god then where is the flow flow is getting hindered no not because god is taking away the gift but flow is not there <coughs> and uh, god exposes but uh, but the confusion comes when they are in sin and they are still miracles are happening and all that then we think like lord how is this but actually it can happen yeah gifts will gifts will stay but the person may lose the ability to operate in those gifts yeah yeah correct 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 all those things happen okay so yeah i know sometimes those are the uh, unfortunately uh, things happen like that people are living in sin and still ministering but it it won't stay for long because god you know the the light will always expose the darkness okay fine so very important questions and i know the subject of anointing is maybe we should have a whole course on it i don't know <laughs> yeah so okay so let's try to move forward because we have to discuss a very important theme called impartation okay um now let's understand couple of things you know when we talk about anointing there are measures of anointing measures means there can be great anointing and then you know maybe a slightly lesser measure uh, in other people of the same anointing so there are different kinds of gifts uh, anointings like we could say teaching anointing prophetic anointing healing anointing you know miracle anointing 
<coughs> worship anointing. We give them many words. Okay, so there can be all kinds of anointings, but the same anointings can be at different measures. Like examples are given in our notes, Moses and the 70 elders. So Moses led thousands of people uh, through uh, Egypt and, you know, he, he led them as they were journeying to the promised land. What kind of anointing did Moses carry? You know, Moses carried a leadership anointing. Now, at one point, because he was not able to handle so much, there were 70 elders chosen. And God put on them also the leadership anointing. But were they the kind of leaders that Moses was? No. What is the anointing? Leadership anointing. But measures. Moses' leadership anointing is something else. Whereas the elders... Though they had leadership anointing, it's a different measure. Got it. Now, let's consider. Similarly, Moses and Joshua, both are leaders. Both led the children of Israel. But the same leadership anointing looks different for both of them. Because their assignments are different. Moses is leading the people out. Okay? Whereas Joshua is leading the people in. So, the challenges that Moses had of of providing leadership to the journeying crowd is different from Joshua's because Joshua is fighting giants. Joshua is dividing the land. You know, he's, he's giving the portions of the land. Got it? So it's all different. Though they, we say leadership, it's a broad term. The anointings look very different. The measures of anointing. Elijah, Elisha. Okay, very interesting. Elisha desired a double portion. Can you imagine? Double portion. What is double? It's a mathematical number term. If there is one, there is two. So, Elisha is desiring whatever Elijah has, double of that. And guess what? He got it. Because there was an instruction. To be faithful to Elijah all the time and watch Elijah even when he is taken away. And so Elisha did it. And then when we study the miracles of Elijah and Elisha in terms of numbers, the number of miracles in Elisha's life are exactly double that of Elijah. You know, God is so faithful, isn't it? You look at scripture and scripture is confirming that Elisha did get a double portion. So, what does this tell us? There are all kinds of anointings and we can have greater measures. Somebody can have little, somebody can have more. We can think about double, triple. Possible, everything is possible because there are measures of anointing. Okay, yes. Any questions? Yes. So, uh... Can the measures of anointing can depend on depending on our personal prayer life, no? mm. or uh, yeah, means like how to tell. So is it depending on our personal life, or is it depending on our desire, or how it will happen? The measure. Yeah. So the same four points apply. Bless you. Whatever we are saying, no, uh, we we touched on four points. We said <coughs> God's grace and gift, then uh, word of God. Consecration, expectation. So it will depend on that. So the more we are uh, increasing on in all these things, measure will go up and up and up. Okay. But one thing we have to uh, also note, it also depends on God's call on our lives. Now, I'll just give an example. For that sake, I'm using the name of a person. Uh, not like I'm promoting anyone. Uh, like... Let's take for example, you know, maybe I am I am a, a life group leader and I can teach the word very well. And I'm teaching, teaching, teaching. And slowly, you know, I get more responsibility and they ask me, hey, can you come and minister the word here and there? So I'm doing. I'm doing to the best that is possible. And I'm carrying a certain teaching anointing. But then you can compare it with you know, teachers of the word of God, like you can take a Derek Prince or you can take a, a Joyce Meyer and, you know, uh, 
they are some their way of ministering and the audience that god has given them something different now i cannot expect that as i'm growing in the anointing i'm also going to become a joyce meyer her calling is that i may or may not get into that so it also depends on my calling i can increase to the max of the anointing for my life but it also depends on my calling i cannot you know maybe be on stage or anything i don't know that's their calling got it so yeah we can increase but increase doesn't mean that i can walk in someone else's calling it depends on how god has called us okay uh talents yes 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 that's that's a good example so you know when jesus gave each person a talent one talent two talents five talents uh, is there anybody else apart from elijah and elisha where somebody is like sought for double portion of uh, anointing or a blessing and then receive somebody sought for a greater anointing i can't think of anything as of as of now you know that specific but if anyone else can you can answer anyone also the question was anyone uh, any other example where someone sought for a double portion anointing Oh, okay. Jesus and John the Baptist. Okay. Uh, so, so, what about Paul, Apostle Paul? Okay. Yeah, he had very great anointing. Now we don't know in terms of the measure, like double, triple. We don't know. So, yeah, but he had great anointing, uh, sister. I agree with you. Okay. So, as far as John the Baptist and Jesus are concerned, see, there is a verse. John three verse thirty four. The one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. Ha! See, Spirit without measure. So while we talk about the anointing with measure in Elijah's life, Elisha's life, maybe even as Sister Gertrude pointed, Paul's life, great anointing. But when we talk about Jesus, Spirit without measure. that's the anointing that jesus had spirit without measure okay and some some uh, theologians uh, interpret this as all the five uh, five fold ministry offices jesus carried the anointing for all five that's why it is called a spirit without measure is what you know many people interpret it as because he's an apostle and high priest of our confession you know when when we study the book of hebrews he is the prophet you do not respect a, a prophet in your own city we we read about that he is a prophet he is a great teacher teacher of the word uh, he is an evangelist obviously you know he went everywhere and he uh, spoke the word of god so he is in the office of an evangelist but also he is the chief shepherd so yeah. a pastor's pastor the highest pastor so he is in the he is in every five fold ministry office which is why the spirit over jesus's life and we can't compare john akil for this very reason we can't because jesus is something else because he is a christ spirit without measure yes uh yeah spirit without measure is also applicable for us it's like once pastor explained it um when it comes to the presence of god you know each time we say god we want more of your presence more of your presence right now think about a human being i'm meeting each of you today when i meet you i meet you i can't say more of you or less of you isn't it uh i met vimal vimal i want to meet more of you if i say like that you'll be like ma'am what are you saying i can't understand it because we are limited as human beings we are limited when i come only that much of me is there okay but when it comes to god when it comes to the holy spirit you see the spirit of god is immeasurable 
so it's something like if we take this big room right now and the spirit of god comes more of him can also come much more of him can come because he's so immeasurable that he can keep coming and yet he didn't complete coming you know what i mean so in that understanding we say you know greater measure much more of god lord more of your presence and it will never end the, even if we have more and more and more it will never end because that is the spirit of god is immeasurable and uh, that's the way you know the spirit works so in the same way when it comes to the anointing also there's a flow to the great measure there can be a flow of the anointing okay so we still have not touched impartation today i made up my mind i'm going to complete but i'm sorry it's already 10:47 Mm, but yeah this is important subject all right so if there's anything to discuss we'll discuss and close today impartation next class online students anything that you would like to share okay seems like we're done um so uh, can one of the online students lead us in prayer as we close today Father God, we want to give you thanks. We want to worship you, adore you, and honor you. We give you praise for who you are. We give you all the adoration for the great and marvelous things you do in our lives, the wisdom, the knowledge, the things that you teach us about Father. We don't take it for granted, oh God. But every time we come in your presence, oh Lord, we are so gracious and happy, my Father. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your servant that you have used to speak to us about Father Lord. We want to surrender everything unto your hands and all the students, O oh Lord my God. We pray that may your spirit elevate us, O oh Lord my God. We worship you and we bless your name. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Miriam. I appreciate that. God bless you all. Uh, have a very blessed weekend everyone